Is this really the best 3D scanner for automotive? This is the EinScan Rigil. Now this is the latest and greatest scanner in the prosumer lineup of scanners from Shining 3D. And it's got blue lasers, infrared, full color, it's wireless, and you can tether it with a PC to give it even more power and do markerless laser scanning. So today, I'm gonna run it to his paces. We're gonna scan first this brake rotor on a surface that has markers. And then I'm gonna scan this Porsche valve cover with markers on the actual part. And then we're gonna to switch to IR mode and scan this chain link from a very famous theme park here in Southern California with just IR, no markers. So if you had to scan a roller coaster and you wanted to do the whole thing, you'd see how that works without putting markers down. And lastly, we're gonna scan this wheel in full color to see how that turns out. Now in a few weeks, we're gonna release another video where we tether it to the computer and use the whole markerless laser scanning, full color, everything but the software isn't out yet because we're filming this before this has even been released. So let's dive right in and see how well this new Rigel really works. And we're gonna start on this brake rotor right here. This is just from Alexis, as you can see, it's pretty fresh, pretty new, and it's reflective, which is very difficult for most scanners to do. So the blue lasers on this is gonna come in very handy. And I almost forgot to mention, if you wanna pre-order or buy one of these, depending when you're watching the video, go to visionminer.com scanners, and we've got a whole selection. So maybe this isn't the right scanner for what you're doing. We have a whole lineup and we consult and help you determine what you actually need. But for a lot of you guys, especially you automotives, this is gonna be an amazing scanner to have. So go to visionminer.com and check that out. So right here, I just got it in laser mode. I'm gonna set up my settings and we're gonna go for 0.5 millimeter resolution. We're gonna go by marker alignment. And as you can see, it has the global markers. We're just gonna go the fastest, most streamlined way. So we're gonna scan everything at once instead of scanning markers first. And then I'm just gonna hit the play button. All right, it's picking up the markers. Looks like I am in seven line mode. So I'm gonna switch to the 38 laser lines. Okay, that is working much better. And I can just take this turntable, you can just take a Lazy Susan, paint it black, throw some markers down on it, and you got a turntable just like this one. And this is, this, this is actually doing really good. You know, for half the price of something like the HX2, you get a much smaller viewing window, so you can't scan as big or as fast or quite as high detail, but this is doing a pretty darn good job. Let's even get the sides. It's doing a really good job actually tracking all those markers on the side kind of having some trouble with that really shiny edge right there. But depending why you're scanning this, maybe it's for just general dimensions, it doesn't necessarily matter. If you're getting into CAD modeling, you need to learn to think in circles and cylinders and splines and things like that. With 3D scanning, if you're reverse engineering, you can think of, do I have the data I need to complete the project? And that might just be getting the edges of a radius or something like that. You'll have enough data to know the size of the object in multiple dimensions. You don't have to spend all day making sure you get every nook and cranny. Okay, so this is looking pretty good. Like I say, it's having trouble with that edge. So maybe if I just come down at more of an angle here, I will say it's very nice having this screen on the front because I can just, I'm just looking at what I'm scanning on the back of the scanner and that's a very, very good feature. I'm seeing a little bit of artifacting. Usually uh, that stuff will get totally cleaned up in the software right after. And this is capturing full color too. This is <laughs> All right, let's go ahead and pause. Let's look at our data. Zoom around a little bit. Looks like we did get all sorts of everything around that edge, except for maybe that side. Should be good enough. Now if I wanted, I think I can edit this data right here on the screen. My data quality indicator, ooh. Sweet, so say I wanna pick up more data, I'm just gonna hit go again, and now I have my data quality indicator. This is fantastic, because the blue stuff, it has good data, and the yellow is not sufficient. So I can tell, without just visually looking at it, if I have solid data all the way around. Now, quick tip, quick trick, something you can do, is pick up some 
a sub scanning spray. We sell this at visionminer.com under scanner accessories and it's a lifesaver. So this basically is a disappearing spray. Get some a sub blue scanning spray or orange. Blue will last two to four hours, orange will last 24 plus hours, but it will completely sublimate into the air, meaning it disappears and it leaves virtually no residue. So if I wanna make this scan turn out better, if I don't care about the color texture, I just give it a light misting of a sub, especially around that difficult edge we were having. And I'm gonna continue scanning. Oh yeah. And that is picking up data much more quickly. Now this doesn't have the single laser line that you would get on something like the FreeScan Combo to get down into these gaps and holes. So depending on why you're scanning this, that might be a feature you wanna consider. Usually, for professional applications, you should go with something like the FreeScan line or even an HX2. The speed, accuracy, field of view, everything is advantageous and will save you time. But if you're just looking for something to do projects here and there, dude, this is a pretty sweet scanner. All right, let's pause it. All right, so I'm gonna confirm. It's gonna optimize that point cloud and I should be able to edit it and get rid of some of that table. Yeah, okay, wow. Got that texture, that color. All right, so if I hit the little snip, the little scissors, let's use the lasso. So I'm gonna start right there. Let's see that line. Boom, got all that data. You can delete all that. Obviously anything underneath it, we will not need. So I can do the same thing here. And then just trash that data. Now, a lot of this other data is probably going to automatically disappear. So I'm gonna go ahead and say complete, confirm the cropping. Now it's gonna process, wow, that was quick. And if we go to global optimization, now it's gonna go through and it should clean it up even more and get rid of some of those little extra data things hanging around. One of the biggest things about Shining 3D has always been the ease of use of their software, the streamlined nature of it. It's an intuitive process from scan to cleanup to export. It's just easy. Literally anybody could learn to do this in five minutes. It's very, very good. And they've always been known for that. A lot of the other companies, the biggest complaints if you go to Reddit and search about the other brands of scanners, it's usually their interface. Across the industry, there's a lot of options for scanners and they will all sort of do the job. The main things to consider are price point and support and then ease of use, all sorts of stuff like that. And that's where Shining really shines. They're just really good and they work great. And here at Vision Miner, we fully support all of their products. So if you buy it from us, you get an additional line of support, you get our experience, and you get the accessories and whatnot that we offer with every scanner we sell. So give us a call, check out our website to find out more about that. Here we go, we've got the data. Now we could continue to clean this up and everything here on the scanner itself, but I'd rather use the desktop software that has a couple more features and you can see it better on a bigger screen. So we're gonna go ahead and just complete this saving. Okay, there we go. Save to model library. So that's gonna go into the model library. Now you have two options for exporting off of this. One is up to the Shining Cloud, and then you can access it from anywhere in the world, or you can directly plug it into the PC. Sorry guys, just window PCs. There's Actually, you know what? There may be some Mac software for this one soon. Don't hold me to it, but this is closer to their Einstar line. Just looking at the style, they might actually include Mac software. So stay tuned for that. Give us a call and we'll let you know the latest and greatest. Let's switch to trying some of the classic HX tests with the handheld scanning of the Porsche valve covers. First thing I'm gonna do is check my resolution and let's just go, well, we'll leave it. That worked really well. I'm gonna go to the laser, cross laser lines though. And then we can see, oh, this is so fast. I'm very surprised. Here we go. Okay, this is working really well. Okay, so we're gonna pause. I got that whole side. I'm gonna save that. Do the other side real quick. See if we can align. Ooh! Oh yeah, you got my hand in there. That's gonna need some cleanup. All right, we'll call that good enough. Complete, confirm. 
All right, complete. All right, and now that's saved to the model library. So we can do the other side. Okay, got that whole side. And then we'll delete some more data. Value for money, guys. This is very good. Complete. Okay, so can I align two scans on the device itself? Boom, boom. If I select two of them, I don't know if you can align two separate scans, but you can get two separate scans very easily at the very least. Again, call us for the latest update on that. We'll put a, we'll, we'll find out, we'll put a little text bubble here saying, actually you can or you cannot. Let's switch over to IR mode, infrared mode. All right, so I'm in a new project group and I'm gonna select IR infrared. That's the V-cell projector. There are lasers, it's a different kind of laser. Now, why would we wanna use this? The main thing is it tracks really well on just geometry and it will do so without markers. So this is a chain link from a very famous theme park in Southern California. And there's a lot of these, part of a roller coaster, right? So imagine you gotta scan these to see if they've stretched and gone out of spec over time. That's gonna be a lot of chain. You don't wanna put markers all over the entire chain to find those numbers. So instead you would use infrared mode and you don't have to use markers at all. And that just streamlines the process. So let's see how well it works. Let's check our settings. We're gonna do 0.5 millimeters again. We're gonna do small objects. Feature alignment, texture alignment, marker alignment, global markers, just feature alignment. Let's hit go. So you'll notice there's no lights on the, like coming out on camera because it's infrared light, right? We don't see infrared light, so it's best, practically invisible to the human eye. Now, if we looked at the security cameras that we have all over this place uh, and it was nighttime, uh, then you would see a lot of light splashing around. See if I can get around to this other side. It does like to lose tracking, but I think we'll be all right, yeah. Yeah, so you really gotta just manage a little bit. Oh, I've been ignoring this whole time. There's this little green slider on the right side that tells you if you're in the right distance or not. So I'm just gonna remain in the correct distance. All right, let's pause it and look at it. Yep, plenty of data. So we'll accept that. All right, and then we can do the same thing here. Let's just chop it up using the lasso. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and delete. All right, so we got that data. Now, if, if this was for a project uh, like the one I described, then that's enough data to do the measurements and find the you know results of what you're looking for. I'm gonna confirm that cropping there and then just check out that data. Now, if I go here, I can actually process the mesh on the scanner here, remove small floating parts, smooth it, et cetera, make it watertight. Let's go ahead and apply. Whoo, look at that data. Not, that's pretty good. Very nice. All right, let's go ahead and complete. So we're gonna swap these batteries real quick. I'm just going to hit the button up top, hold it down for a half second, and then slide to power off just like a phone. I'm gonna wait for the fans to stop running. There we go. And then it's as easy as Popping up at the bottom, dropping out the old batteries, and popping in the new ones. Turning it back on. There we go. And let's do some IR scanning in color of this wheel right here. Okay, so I'm in infrared mode. I'm gonna check my settings and let's go one millimeter resolution, medium to large objects, feature alignment, texture alignment. Let's turn off texture alignment. Let's just go by features. Now this might get difficult because as you can notice, it's a symmetrical wheel, except for that thing and a little bit of the texture, but it may have a hard time doing the, you know, knowing which spoke it's on. So I'm gonna to try to keep my distance and I'm gonna to try to do one all the way around and see how it does. Then we'll look at the texture and go from there. Oh, and let me actually look here too at the working distance. I'm gonna crank that up so that it's a little bit wider. And then let's check our brightness. All right, so brightness for the color. We do want nice and bright. Let's do, oh, auto exposure. Look at that, that's beautiful. 
And then for this one, oh, base plane removal. Beautiful, that might remove the floor as we go. So let's see, let's gather some data. Oh, all right, let me pause that real quick. I don't know if you saw that, but it duplicated some of the spokes. So I'm gonna use a feature that is a game changer, and I'm gonna use the rewind feature. So now we can see, boom, right there. See how it doubled up there? It got confused by that symmetry, which is very difficult for scanners to do, and it doubled things up. So I'm just gonna go right before we doubled anything up. I'm gonna hit complete, continue, and then let's check out the data. Let's see what we got so far. If I go around here, I can turn on the texture display. All right, we can accept this. And then if I want, I can just remove the floor, adjust it to a good angle, hit the cutter, and then go on the lasso, and just go like, yoink, delete, and complete. Okay, so now we got our first scan. It's not looking too bad, but I think I wanna change some settings in here, so let's complete that. So now, I'm gonna turn on texture alignment. No markers still. If I wanted to avoid that completely, that last thing you saw where the symmetry of the part confused the scanner, if you just throw a couple random markers on any part, it practically eliminates that entire issue because randomized markers are very, very distinct and it can track those much better than just the geometry where it's doing all the processing inside and it just makes it much better. All right, so let's try this right here. Let me set up my colors, my brightnesses. Let's go auto brightness, hold steady. You know, a lot of the guys that I think will get really good use out of this particular scanner is uh, fab shops, the automotive shops that are doing custom work, like you're putting a custom turbo kit into a GTR or something like that. You could scan the engine bay to get all the basic dimensions of everything and see how much space you have and then design everything and go from there. So for the price point, this is a ridiculously good deal that'll get you a lot of the professional features without having to break the bank with the full professional scanner. Okay, that's one orbit. Let's see, let's go around, let's check it out. See how it turned out. Let's go into here, show the texture, not not terrible, not great, it's a little bit orange, but all of this, of course, can be fixed in post-processing. A slight color balance adjustment on that, and you'd be good to go. So, let's go ahead and accept it, and then we'll go just even it out, and let's just get rid of that layer. And uh, get rid of that floor right there. Complete. So here you have it, a very fast scan of a wheel on the Einscan Rigel. Okay, so that's a quick first look, first impression scans on the Einscan Rigel. Now, where should you buy it and why? Well, I would implore you to check out visionminer.com slash scanners, because here at Vision Miner, we not only cross-train just about everybody and everything, but when you call, a real person answers. Test this, give us a call right now and pre-order your Rigel. But realistically, we use all these scanners every day and we offer support. And then if we can't figure it out, we have special contacts within the manufacturer that we connect you with directly. So there's huge value. And then there's a bunch of other stuff from our experience and our creative ways that we've managed to scan very difficult, large or small, tiny, intricate parts. We have all of that. And when you're a customer of ours, we share all that with you. So there's benefits, and uh, I know some people out there do discounting and whatnot, but we will do our best to meet or beat any price, and I guarantee you, we will beat the value. So if you're interested in one of these things, definitely go to visionmeyer.com, check it out. Should be a link down below this video somewhere. Leave a comment on some crazy object you want us to scan in the next video. But with that, thank you guys so much for watching. Have a positive rest of your day, and I'll see you on the next video.